Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. Our celebrant is Most Reverend Stephen Chow, Bishop of Hong Kong. Please join the choir in singing the entrance hymn, Baptized in Water. Brother and sister of the English-speaking community at the Hong Kong Cathedral, welcome to all of you to this Eucharistic celebration presided by our new bishop, Most Reverend Stephen Zhao. In your name, I would like first to express our deep respect and support to our new bishop 
then I ask all of you now to manifest our warmly welcome to our new bishop. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And with your spirit. Just want to say good morning. And uh, it's my first time here with the English-speaking community. It's, I'm happy to be here, though the occasion is a bit down by the the, the restrictions, but I'm sure you all understand the, the, ne the necessity for that. Now, in today's liturgy, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus our Lord. In celebrating the baptism of Jesus, we are celebrating our own baptism too. Let us ask the Lord to renew the grace of baptism within us, so that in spite of our all shortcomings, we may, in our daily journey, persevere in his footsteps. Lord Jesus, in baptism, the Father made us his children, and his favor rest upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in baptism, you make us sisters and brothers and heirs to eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in baptism, the Holy Spirit descended upon us to help us to share in your work. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. The first reading is from the book of prophet Isaiah. The passage informs us that the people are urged to prepare a way for the Lord who is coming to save them. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for her all sins. A voice cries out. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The red land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of gold tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by strong arm. Here is his reward for him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock in his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the oaths with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 104. The response is, O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. My God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a clock. You have spread out the heavens like a tent cloth. constructed your palace upon the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You travel on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flaming fire your ministers. Manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have brought them all. The earth is full of your creatures, the sea also, great and wide, in which are schools without number of living things, both small and great.
they look to you to give them food in due time. When you give them it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. If you take away their breath, they pre perish and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. In this reading, we hear that God's grace and love are manifested in Jesus Christ. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devotedly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and kindness and generous love of God, our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. John said, one mightier than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The people 
were filled with expectation that all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the fronts of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people have been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized, and was praying, heaven was opened, and Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, John might be the Christ. Unquote. Have you had experience of waiting for someone to show up over a long period of time? And that person just did not show up until much, much later. What went through your mind while waiting for the person? Were you ready to give up? Or you decided to continue waiting with faith and hope? And what happened to you after the person showed up finally, finally? Anti-climax? Uh, or full of expectations on your part? Finally, he's here. She is here. Type of thing, right? I was told by different Catholics that because the bishop seats was vacant for almost three years, there were many and different expectations for the new bishop. Now that the wait is finally over, they expect the bishop will lead the church out of its limbo and move toward a promising future. Of course, there are different expectations on how this will be realized, and it is the approach that is contentious to some, even with this restriction announcement. People have expectations ranging from no cancellation to as cancel as fast as possible. You know, <laughs> so range of so there are voices from both ends. Huh? Um, does this not remind you of someone? The approach he took was contentious to some. Does that not remind you of someone? Jesus our Lord. He was the much awaited Messiah. But how the expectations were realized was what got Jesus into deep troubles, finally costing his life. I'm not predicting that will be my path, but I should better be realistic. What the book of the prophet Isaiah has written in the first reading today, and I quote, like a shepherd, he feeds his flock in his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. Unquote. Carrying, crying out at the top of his voice that the punishment was over and the guilt had been properly amended for. In other words, final liberation from the darkness and suffering and the future should be all bright and promising. 
Remember, the Israel people were exiled at the time. Huh? What a lovely picture! And I would love to see this happening now. Everything will be fine, bright, and you know, assured. However, it would be more realistic for us to expect this at the end of our own earthly pilgrimage, when our Lord welcomes us to a bright and eternally promising new home. Not now. Put our faith in God, rather than in man, including your bishop, has been the wise scriptural teaching all along. We put our faith in God. Okay, pray for your bishops and your all your leaders that they will follow closely, and they will have the courage to do what they need to do. That's the prayer. But have your faith in God alone. The baptism of our Lord is both a reaffirming and a missioning event. Reaffirming by the public declaration of the Father, the appearance of the Holy Spirit, and the acceptance of the Son, the mission that would please His Father. Okay, the Trinity appeared. But this mission, as we know, was not a cozy one. When James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus for some favors, here is Jesus' reply. I quote, "You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized?" That's Mark ten thirty-eight. Jesus was referring to his suffering followed by death. It is easy, like on this Sunday, huh, to see the baptism of the Lord a glorious moment, oh, the Holy Trinity appearing, huh, in which He was publicly, publicly acclaimed by the Father and the Holy Spirit. If you just take a snapshot of the baptism, it's glorious, it's reassuring, it's encouraging, right? But the meaning of the baptism is heavy. But a core, I say, a core objective of baptism is mission. Okay, it's mission, not only our personal redemption. So we are baptized not just for our own personal redemption; it's for mission, our baptism. Our Lord was baptized for God's mission, and so we are sharing in His baptism and mission. It was said in Paul's letter to Titus. In the second reading today, and I quote, "He saved us through the the bath of rebirth, a renewal by the Holy Spirit, so that we might be justified by His grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life." End quote. How do we enter into eternal life if not through death? Death. Okay. Yet death can take on different forms when we are asked to let go of something precious to ourselves, such as through the death of our loved ones, our failures, lifestyle changes, relinquish unhelpful habits, including diets, breaking up of relationships, etc. These all are deaths, and these all have suffering, pain involved, right? For sure, bereavement usually accompanies these deaths. Bereavement meaning you bargain, you try to delay, you you deny, and you find out you have to accept. Huh? Without our letting go and death, there's little way we can rise to a higher spiritual level. And our resurrection, ultimately. For me, the most recent death is to let go of my cherished educational ministry and my familiar Jesuit community. When I accepted 
this Episcopal mission. Both the education, the education ministry and Jesuit community are close to my heart. I must say I felt rather comfortable and secure in them. By letting go and taking on a totally new mission, adopting a new culture of the diocese, it is a form of death to me. Yet I should trust in my Lord, who has promised me his kingdom by participating in his mission in whatever ways after his desire. Hence, my friends, we are all called to be baptized with the baptism that Jesus, our Lord, was baptized. Yet it is up to us to accept the baptism or not on a daily basis. Of course, we are all baptized, or most of us, if not all, are baptized. But it is a daily renewal that you participate in this baptism. Discerning for Christ's desire for ourselves, letting go, following him, participating in his mission, so to rise with him and claim our heirship in God's kingdom in eternity. That's our journey. God bless you all. Please stand for the profession of faith. Believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, the baptism of Jesus help us to appreciate the greatness of our own baptism. Let us pray for the grace to live up to our baptism. The response to today's general intercession is, Lord, renew the grace of our baptism. Lord, renew the grace of our baptism. For all church leaders and all Christians, that they may strive to live up to the dignity conferred on them to, in baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, renew the grace of our baptism. For the whole world, the prophetic voices may call the nations of reconciliation and continue to speak out fearlessly until justice is established on the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, renew the grace of our baptism. For our political and civil leaders, that they may see truly and act rightly. L let us pray to the Lord. Lord, renew the grace of our baptism. For those who are suffering persecution because of their belief in Christ, 
that they may have the strength to continue witnessing to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, renew the grace of our baptism. For all of us gathered here, that our life may bear witness to the faith we profess with our lips. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, renew the grace of our baptism. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into the world to lead us out of sin and death and to show us the way to your kingdom. Help us to follow him with courage and steadfastness so that we may reach the glory you have prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please join the choir in singing the offertory hymn, When Jesus Came to Jordan. Please stand. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honour the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. So, and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant hath been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his loved ones, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. You do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Given thanks that we held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Lord, remember also our brother and sister who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heir to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors yours forever and ever. Friends, before we receive this communion of life and love, let us now turn to God our Father, turn to His kingdom, open our hearts, and welcome the kingdom of peace, charity, and justice become a reality in us and among us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. No, I don't have to. I don't have to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and grant us peace in our days. Through your mercy, let us bring us to peace and salvation through Christ, Savior Jesus Christ. Friends, here our risen Lord is with us. Here he wishes us peace. As he said to his apostles, his disciples, and he said to us now, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. So look not on our sins, on the faith of the church, and grant us the peace and salvation of all the world. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, we ask. God forever and ever. Amen. So, my friends, may the peace of our risen Lord be with you always. And the Spirit. Now, let us affirm each other with this blessing of Christ and after Mass beyond here.
Behold, my friends, the Lamb of God, who Him who takes away the sins of the world. We are indeed blessed to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Today's communion hymns are On Jordan's Bank and God is Love.
There, there's one piece of church announcement. Today is the second Sunday of the month. So after the Mass, the Society of St. Vincent of Paul will receive your donation at entrances of the church. Thank you in advance for your generous contribution in meeting the needs of the poor ones. Please stand. My friends, let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we, we pray for the synod. Huh? We stand before you, Lord, Holy Hope. Spirit, as we gather Never today in your, in your name. name. With, With you, you alone, alone to guide, guide us, make, make yourself, yourself at home in our hearts. hearts. Teach us the, the way, way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let us ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partially influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and from what is right. All this we ask you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's bow, preparing ourselves to receive God's blessing. May the Lord confirm our hearts in holiness and keep us blameless in His sight. May the Lord keep us steadfast in faith and courageous in witnessing the gospel. May the Lord who has called us to eternal glory in Christ strengthen and support us with his grace. And may the blessing of mighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. Brothers and sisters, in this feast of the baptism of the Lord, convinced that the Lord is inviting us to follow him with courage and steadfastness, let us now go in peace to love the Lord and to serve each other. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to you. Please join the choir and sing. Uh, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. I'm Anthony I from the Finance Committee and I'm delighted to take this opportunity to thank you for your support of our cathedral in the last year, especially during this pandemic. Today, I would like to report to you the financial situation of our cathedral and call upon you for your support for the 2022 annual donation. First, the cathedral's financial health is healthy. The renovation project has costed us more than 33 million Hong Kong dollars. The project has been mostly completed. The remaining works include the construction of the Cane Row staircase canopy and the repair of the slope and stairs adjacent to the cathedral's compound. Secondly, in November last year, we have launched an online donation platform, providing an additional means for donation. Over the last two months, more than 200,000 Hong Kong dollars have been collected. And regarding the annual donation envelopes, we have raised over 2 million Hong Kong dollars. On behalf of the cathedral, I would like to express my gratitude to everyone 
especially since the pandemic has been raging for the last year and a half. Everyone still generously and selflessly help our cathedral. This year, as in many years, the Finance Committee continues its annual donation plan. And the color of the annual donation envelope in 2022 is green, and you can collect them at the front door and other exits. However, in the past many years, the Sunday donation of the cathedral has not been able to cope with the operation of the cathedral. Especially during the pandemic, number of people going to church have been reduced. Generally speaking, Sunday's dedication is only enough for about 40% of our money expenditures. Most of the, uh, the remaining church expenses depend on the special donation of other church members and annual dedication plans. So today, your support really matters. And in conclusion, I wish you a warm and healthy new year. Bless you all. Please join the choir and sing the recessional hymn. I sing the mighty power of God. Thank you. 